Back when I was in school, I was never a huge fan of this concept called attending classes. And what's funny and ironic was they could never mark me absent because um, for the first half hour when they were giving attendance, I was there. But after that, gone. Nowhere to be seen for the entire day. And me being in class is like a very strange phenomenon. Like it, it didn't really make sense. Like season eight of Game of Thrones. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I reserve that for my therapist. But the reason why I was not in class was because I was too busy taking part in a lot of extracurricular activities, volunteering initiatives, competitions, you know, things that excited me way more than knowing that mitochondria was the powerhouse of the cell. And you'd find me in some corner of the school working away on one of those projects. And what's even more hilarious was in my senior year, I became the head boy of the school, which meant that I was supposed to set an example in front of these students. And yet, I was the one who was called to the principal's office the most number of times for not being in class. And every time I walked into his room, he'd go like, bruh. Because there was this sense of disappointment that you can see in his face. Now, the reason for all of those things was not because I was not um, serious about my learning or I did not enjoy learning. It was because I had a different definition of what learning was. For me, the things that I picked up, the skills and knowledge that I picked up when I was outside classrooms was way more valuable than being inside classrooms. So to give you an example, one of the biggest things that I was involved in was called the F1 in School STEM Challenge, which is the largest STEM competition in the world. The objective of which is to design and manufacture your own F1 car and race it on a 20 meter track. Apart from that, you're required to get sponsors, raise funds, uh, design portfolios, build pit displays. It's just like running your own F1 team. And at the age of 17, our team was selected to represent the country for the world finals. And we were tasked with raising 50,000 US dollars. 50,000 US dollars at the age of 17. I barely had $5 in my pocket back then. I mean, it's not like I have $5 now. But the things that I learned from that competition was incredible. I learned how to work in a team. I learned how to be a leader. I learned how to write emails and present in front of global brands. I learned about principles, about design, manufacturing, and it was incredible. Another huge competition I was a part of was called the World Scholars Cup. And this involved debating, creative writing, and uh, quizzing of sorts. This competition taught me how to speak with candor. It taught me how to write effectively. And it also taught me that learning can be a lot of fun. And it equipped me with a lot of social skills because I was put in a situation where I was interacting with students from different backgrounds and at one point from all across the world. And it forced me to come out of my shell, be confident, and just be myself. Again, a very life-changing experience. Now, all of this happened because I took learning into my own hands, went outside my classrooms, because there are some things that books just cannot teach you. And now, managing all of that with my academics, and mind you, I went to an Indian school, uh, was a little difficult to say the least. And I was also trying to have a social life, and by social life I mean playing FIFA with my brother and watching friends. But uh, the motivation behind doing all those cool things was not a number or a letter on my report card. It was the adrenaline rush of taking part in a competition. It was the sense of satisfaction of volunteering with special needs children. It was the accomplishment of facing my fears and performing in front of a huge crowd. In a nutshell, I felt a sense of purpose. Now, given all the changes that's happening across the world from a macro perspective, are we instilling in students a sense of purpose? Now, like most of you, I'm a huge fan of superheroes, especially after the MCU and Avengers Endgame. It left an impact on me unlike anything else. And my favorite superhero is Spider-Man. And Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was the first ever movie that I ever watched. And I still remember wearing the Spider-Man costume, running around my house, pretending to be the hero that I was. And even to this date, I consider myself to be a hero sometimes, you know? The only thing is I don't have superhero powers, nor do I have a costume, nor do I have a girlfriend. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm not a superhero, but it got me thinking. Who are superheroes? They seem to be these incredible people with superpowers and heroic abilities that we could only dream of having. But at their core, they're all united by one common thing. 
they live, breathe, and fight for something bigger than themselves. Now, could you imagine the kind of world that we can build if we modeled our education systems to teach students just that? To teach them that it is possible to be like the heroes they look up to. Now, for any revolutionary idea to gain ground, there needs to be a base, a foundation of sorts. And that foundation is what I'd like to call the Uncle Ben theory. Finally, I get to the title of my TED talk. And this is something I came up with, by the way. And we all know what Uncle Ben told Peter Parker. With great power comes great responsibility. So what is all of our great power? You might have seen this in another TED talk by Mel Robbins. And it is preached by my favorite entrepreneur, Gary Vaynerchuk. This number represents the odds of you being born. So people smarter than you and I took into account a lot of factors like biology, evolution, DNA stuff, probably Keanu Reeves. Uh, they took into account dinosaurs, uh, the comets hitting the Earth, and came up with a number that represents the odds of you being born to the parents that you have at the time that you were. So it's crazy and it's mad to think that you beat 399 trillion, 999 billion, 999 million, 999,999 people to experience life. And it's, this is somehow like how you know, superheroes are chosen. See where I'm going with this? This number represents your right to live like a superhero. Cliche, yeah, maybe. But it doesn't change the fact that this is a fact. Now, before we get excited and start wearing superhero capes and underwears outside our pants, let's look at the other half of the equation, which is responsibility. At this point, we still live in a time where half of the population still lives in poverty. 750 million people across the world lack access to clean drinking water. In the past 40 years, there's been a 60% decline in wildlife population. Over 67 primary school children still lack access to education. And at this point, there is more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than ever before. I could go on and on about all the problems that's happening across the world, and yet there is no sense of urgency to save the day. Do you remember what uh, Peter told Tony Stark during Civil War? Look, when you can do the things that I can, but you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. So I'm going to repeat that. He said, when you can do the things that I can, but you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. Now, does this mean you're responsible for every single thing that goes wrong on this planet? No. But it means that you're responsible for doing something about it. With great power comes great responsibility. This is what we need to embed into the core of our education systems. And it's going to take more than just some training sessions with teachers and educators. It's going to take students. It's going to take parents and a fundamental shift in the way that they think. It's going to take policymakers and regulators. It's going to take companies, brands, and employers as well. The collective and combined effort of all these stakeholders is what will determine whether we'll have transformative change when it comes to learning. And this is something that we're trying to achieve with our company, Fireflies Education, as well. Now, if you think about this, all of it is just like the plot of a superhero movie. There are bad things happening all around the world. Uh, the stakes are very high. And there's barely enough time to save the day. The tension, the drama, the urgency, it's all very real. In the TV shows, movie, movies, and comics, when the situation was this real, the superheroes stepped up. Batman stepped up when uh, Joker was terrorizing Gotham. Superman stepped up when Zod was doing his thing. John Wick stepped up when they killed his dog. OK, maybe not the best example. Uh, Spider-Man stepped up when Doc Ock or Green Goblin was go going crazy. And the Avengers collectively stepped up when Thanos was threatening to destroy half of the universe. No matter the odds, no matter the costs, they all stepped up. But the question is, when will you? Thank you.